Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is the reading for the week of the Aquarius full moon. You may also be interested in the video I posted a couple days ago. I'll try to remember to link it in the box down below because that video talks a lot about the Lionsgate portal and that type of energy, which is happening early on this week. And of course, it's gonna be bleeding out through to the Aquarius full moon. But since I already talked about that in that other video, I'm gonna be focusing this video on the full moon energy. Full moon is happening on Thursday. And I want to actually draw, <laughs> draw the like placement of the planets that we have going on because this is super interesting. We essentially have a fixed grand cross <laughs> involved with this full moon. So let me just try to represent this here. We have Leo, we have Aquarius. Over here, Taurus and Scorpio, right? The sun is in Leo. The moon, the full moon is going to be in Aquarius. North node in Taurus. South node in Scorpio, right? Let's imagine this all in a circle. Over here in Taurus, we also have Uranus still sitting pretty closely conjunct the North Node. Down here in Aquarius, we also have Saturn. If I can draw Saturn with his rings here, right? We have Saturn sitting really close next to this full moon. So Saturn is going to be very much involved. So we have, obviously, it's a full moon. So the sun is opposite the moon and the North and South node are always opposite each other as well. But it's this cross energy happening. These are all happening within a few, few degrees of this cross. And the moon is gonna be square, the nodes, the sun is gonna be square, the nodes, and Saturn is gonna be conjunct the moon and squaring the nodes and also opposite the sun. <laughs> so this is all, <laughs> th this grand cross energy is worth noting is worth noting which is why i'm taking the time to kind of draw this out you can look this like look this up on a you know on the like astrology transit generator any website that shows you this and you can take a look at all of this energy so this can be a ton of tension a ton of tension with a grand cross especially that this is a fixed grand cross <laughs> right so this is a ton of stubborn energy that doesn't want to change and when it comes into this grand cross formation especially with saturn and uranus involved it, it it's like there is potential here to change the unchangeable to change the unchangeable that is something i talked about way back at the very beginning of this year when the north node moved into Taurus and I talked about how it was like unfixing the fixed or changing the unchangeable, whichever way makes more sense to you. <laughs> um, see how I can't quite seem to spit it out it's just like that pause I had I was sitting with like my mouth open with my muscles kind of frozen and it's like this feeling of like uh like something right on the brink of change like on the brink of change the brink of change but it can feel like it kind of like gets this like tension and this like big pregnant pause of just like ah uh, and then almost like a big pause at the climax and then a kind of shattering point where everything can change like incredibly rapidly because it's like there's this feeling of it took so long for this energy to change because it's like all of these things had to get all lined up all together all of these different energies <laughs> all had to get to the point of readiness. They all, it's like they all want to change together all at once. Maybe they all need, need to change. You know, maybe it's a want, maybe it's a need, I don't know. But it's like they all need to get right on the brink of change and then bam, and then it can suddenly like, oh, I, <laughs> I wish you could see inside my head because it's like I'm seeing like millions of little tiny fractals of light and they're all just like vibrating, vibrating, stationary, but they're vibrating with so much tension and 
like static energy and then finally something like releases this energy releases and then they just start swirling and swirling and swirling and just whoosh, whoosh, like particles of light just spiraling and swirling everywhere and then finally it's like a massive like a massive release of energy of finally things be being changed i i don't <laughs> i don't know how else to put that so let's get let's get some cards and figure out like what what else to know what else to know but i'm also hearing like know the unknowing know the unknowing it's more about unknowing right now it's more about unknowing which is interesting because aquarius is such a mind energy it's like you know an energy of intelligence of genius even of the higher mind but there's something here almost of like aquarius energy itself changing To allow for the unknowable to be able to like <laughs> include zero you know I remember in high school my teachers would talk about how like my math teachers would talk about how once upon a time in like the history of mathematics right that 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 historians are aware of right the history of mathematics that is in traditional like mainstream history right that for a while there people didn't know about the number zero right like zero had to be discovered or probably in more accurately to say that zero had to be rediscovered right zero had to be rediscovered and somebody came up with the idea of the number zero and this is considered like a really important <laughs> like then that's a massive understatement right the, the rediscovery of zero is so significant that it defies my ability to describe it and that's this type of energy here right um the rediscovery of zero the rediscovery of zero and it's like aquarius energy is shifting and changing and being broken open so that it can rediscover neutrality rediscover zero <laughs> so this is this would be the two of swords um this card depicting schizophrenia here it, it, it's like two things at once. I talked about this in the last video I posted, right? The Lionsgate video. Um, two things at once, two things at once. Um, two energies like cohabitating, coexisting within yourself or within a, a group, um, within the collective. It's it's like there, there's just everywhere you look, like you just look for this energy. I'm not even going to point out any more examples. Everywhere you look, look for two things at once, two things at once. The theme of two things at once is going to be everywhere. And maybe... Um, you know, the rediscovery of zero or the rediscovery of neutrality uh, is like creating this space for two things at once to be able to coexist. Oh, and that, that even, that even uh, clues into a video I posted a while ago, just it was called coexist. <laughs> Interesting. Many, many things all coming together many on, on many levels, like um, through, through space and through time coming together through space and through time so and through dimensions <laughs> so this is like man cards are just jumping out okay that's got to be enough i mean <laughs> it, it's like you could find yourself in a situation where you are you meeting or being united with people through many who are from many different places right some kind of family reunion where people have traveled or just even online right where you're connecting with many people through space right through space um that's just one example you could be eating a sandwich and you can realize that there are ingredients in that sandwich from every single continent on the planet and how incredible it is that you can eat a sandwich that's like a global sandwich right it's like plants from the whole globe are distilled into your sandwich and it's in your hand and you're eating it. How incredible is that? This could also be, um, you know, this connection through time where suddenly a bunch of question marks from your past are, are going to like come together and you're going to realize, wow, it's like I had a hint of this. I had this thing come up in the past 
this weird thing from the past, this weird memory, um, this person from the past. It could be an experience from the past and it could be like resolving a bunch of question marks suddenly coming together. It's like a bunch of things that from your past that never made sense, like why you had to go through that or why you had to do that or why you had to move there, why you had to go there, why you had to meet that person, whatever. A bunch of things that never made sense suddenly clicking into place and making sense because it's all going to come together. It's like all of these disparate pieces and parts all meeting in the middle, right? All meeting in the middle, all meeting at the space in the middle. Um, but this is also a, um, for, for especially for you guys, right? You guys are uh, much more likely to experience this on a multidimensional level, a multidimensional level, like the, um, like finding the, finding the place where the dimensions connect, finding the place where the dimensions connect. So if you just think of the metaphor of imagine a bunch of people from many different places, all meeting in one room, right? Think about that, but on a multi-dimensional level where, I mean, you don't, you don't need to try and figure it out, but just imagine a bunch of energies, right? This could play out with, with you meeting like specific beings from different dimensions, right? But it could also just play out more abstractly with different energies, different concepts, different ways of thinking, different levels of consciousness inside of yourself. Yeah, that's the big one, right? Most likely to play out in terms of your own consciousness, where you're suddenly tuned into simultaneously multiple levels of your own consciousness, multiple levels of your own consciousness through multiple different dimensions, and that they all are meeting up inside of you, right? So you are like that. You are the you are the room where your multidimensional consciousness consciousness is all come to meet, <laughs> right? If you can even imagine like different versions of yourself that exist all throughout all of the different dimensions and they all meet inside of you. You are that space. You are like the room where the fa where the multidimensional family reunion takes place. You are the room in which the multidimensional family reunion takes place or reunion of self, reunion of self inside of yourself. But it's like there's like an infinite number of ways that this can play out like you, I think and I think you're going to be seeing this play out on so many different levels and just really open up to like reading the universe. And I think you guys already all do this all the time, but it's like going to even amp up even more where you're going to just start to be noticing like the synchronicities and everything lining up and everything clicking into place and just everything just kind of being like, wow, like you can just sit back and watch your reality unfold and play this out for you on multiple different levels all at, all at the same time. It's like really incredible. Okay, now let me take a look at what, all these cards that spilled out. Okay, so transformation. This would be the death card, which is Scorpio energy. So anybody who has, uh, who has uh, Scorpio placements, take a look at those because the south node is transiting through Scorpio and like really when the south node transits a Scorpio placement it's like a scraping away of something a scraping away the scraping away process can be unpleasant but it is so liberating uh, afterwards it is it, it is like a massive transformation it's the final like sloughing away of dead skin type of thing um, but you don't need to have Scorpio placements to experience this energy this is what I'm talking about with um everything suddenly finally changing, everything suddenly finally clicking into place, all of these different energies all finally lining up and going, okay, we're all aboard. <laughs> so this is like all aboard, <laughs> all aboard. Everyone is all aboard and now the ship can depart, right? Um, everyone is all, everyone is ready. Everyone has readied up. Everyone has readied up and now you're, you're in the, the room, you're on the ship, whatever it is. And now it's time, it's time to go. It's time to, to it's time to begin the new adventure. <sighs> the outsider and understanding the outsider and understanding this is really cool i'm glad i'm really really glad this outsider card came up because i have been wondering for a few days if i was going to make a video on this topic and now i know that this is the video about that topic <laughs> um I have, and I know probably so many of you, especially those of you who identify as star seeds, which is most of you, um, feel, have felt, have felt at certain points in your life, like an outsider, like an outcast, right? Like feeling like an alien, even when you didn't know you were an alien type of thing, right? That the outsider, the outcast, feeling like always on the outside looking in, right? You're going to be like, and I, I'm... I suspect that most of you have already gone through levels of healing on that and you might now feel more at home than you ever have and you look back and go, yeah, I've really come a long way. I no longer really feel victimized by my alienation, right? You've already done healing on that. There's, this is like um, 
an even deeper level of healing on that because it's coming with this deeper, deeper level of understanding. And look at the imagery on these cards. This Here's this little kid on the outside looking in. He's looking through these bars. And on this card, this is a bird who f found the out... Uh, the. Wow, my mouth just like stopped working. <laughs> this bird found the opening in the cage and is flying through, it's flying through. So it's like freedom from the bars. You're gonna get to go through the bars and you're gonna be able to fly free. You're being freed from like feelings of alienation, feelings of victimization and feelings of being the outsider. You're gonna, you're gonna find freedom from that. You're moving on from that, right? This would be, um, uh, never mind, actually, I'm not even going to draw up the equivalence with the traditional tarot. Um, but also, coming into understanding about why you are an outsider, why you are an outsider. And this is, um, so I'm just going to describe my personal experience with this type of energy because yours will be different, right? But it'll be maybe on enough of a vibrational wavelength with my experience that you'll kind of get my drift, right? You'll get my drift. <laughs> you'll get my drift. So it's I I have had so many like interdimensional experiences lately where I realize that I feel like an outsider on earth because I am an outsider like on a higher level, on a, on an abstract level. Like I actually have been the phrase I've been using for myself is like cosmic outsider. <laughs> I'm like a cosmic outsider. Um like my husband and I we have these simultaneous experiences of this and there, I can't go into all the details of all the different experiences because it would be a very long story. Um but just suffice to say that it's like on the highest abstract level of my consciousness, it's like I'm an outsider even on that level. But on that level, of course, to be an outsider is is fantastic, is beautiful. It is complete freedom. It is, um, and it, it is something even that is respected, right? So the, this being a cosmic outsider is not the same type of experience as being an outsider on earth, right? In, in your human body, being an outsider is really alienating and if you feel victimized and you feel outcast, you feel trodden upon, right? You feel like there's nowhere for you to fit in and it, it's, it can be a really negative experience, especially when you're younger, right? Um, but on this abstract cosmic level, to be a cosmic outsider is like a beautiful gift, a beautiful experience. The cosmic outsider it is truly free on the most abstract level of their consciousness. It's like the cosmic outsider walks out into the void, right? Walks out into the quantum, out into the astral, however you conceptualize the universe, right? You, the cosmic outsider walks out into the emptiness, into the cosmic emptiness and creates whatever they want with, with complete freedom, with complete freedom and others and, and then the cosmic outsider like becomes a light out in the void and others are attracted to this light and, and they come and it's like they come and join the party or they come and see the show. They come and see the show. To be a cosmic outsider is a little bit like being a rock star, right? And other cosmic beings are attracted to the music. It's like the cosmic outsider stands on a stage out there in the void, turns on a light. And I mean, the light is their own consciousness, right? Turns on the light, starts playing music and others just come out there to, to, to witness witness it, to see it, to watch the show because it is beautiful. <laughs> um, and so it's like the cosmic outsider can become a hub, can become, can become a hub. <laughs> if you're familiar with the, you know, the expression like hub, hub people and spoke people, you know, if you imagine like a wagon wheel, there's the hub in the middle and then there's the spokes. And so people talk about, you know, in a friend group or a family situation, even how there can be a hub person and that's the person that kind of keeps the whole group together, right? And then the spoke people are, you know, the kind of the kind of people that are connected to the hub. And so you have all of these spoke people that are part of a group, but they're all connected via the one hub person, right? Like in my family, my in my household, like my husband is the hub person because I married him and he has his son. And so me and my stepson, we only know each other because we're connected through the hub person, right? <laughs> And you see that a lot in friend groups where there's like one friend that kind of holds the whole group together, right? Um, and so the cosmic outsider initially like separates from 
the source, right? Separates from the source, travels out into the void, even travels out into the void and like founds a new source of light, founds a new source of light and becomes a new hub. And that is, is one of the ways in which new universes, new multiverses are created even like new central suns, however you want to think about it, right? The cosmic outsider walks out into the void, creates a new source of light, is a new source of light, is a new source of light, right? And then becomes a new hub, becomes a new universe, becomes a new multiverse. So many different ways of looking at this. This is just to give you a taste of my drift, right? So it's so for all of you who feel like outsiders, Tune into the highest level of your abstract consciousness. And I've been, I've been using this word abstraction because, you know, if you listen to me talk, I talk about the human self and then I talk about the higher self and then I talk about the oversoul. And when I say oversoul, I typically mean like 10th, 11th, 12th dimension. And a while ago, somebody asked me like, what is beyond that, right? And I was like, well, you know, that's the level of yourself that is outside of the universe, um, completely outside of this universe, right? Outside of the bubble that is this universe. And I never had a good word for that. I would often use like the, the term primordial self, your primordial self, and that's a good one. Lately, I've been finding myself just, I, I just, I don't know how really how it started. Um, actually, it started in a conversation with my husband. We both just started using this term and I liked it. I just started calling that level, the level of your consciousness that is outside of this universe as the abstraction. It's just your abstraction, your abstraction. It, it, it's, it feels to me like a level of consciousness that it's almost like it's pure thought or it's pure dream or pure feeling, however which way it goes for you. Pure data even, and, and it's out there and it exists prior to the creation of universes or above the level of universes, however you wanna look at it. It's out there in the void, out there in the quantum. So if you tune into your abstraction, the part of yourself that is free from this universe, the part of yourself that is free from any universe or free from any constructed realities, then you, then you can find out that to be a cosmic outsider is the greatest gift and it is respected and it is beautiful and it is odd, right? It is held in awe even. So <laughs> when you kind of remember that level of experience, or just get an just get a sense of it, right? You don't need to have any 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 like visceral experiences of this. That's rather difficult to have. I only I'm only able to like really viscerally experience my abstraction in very very specific energetic and spiritual like containers. Like it, that only happens like a couple times a year in a very specific type of situation when the energy has been very specifically created for me to be able to access that level of my own consciousness. It's not like it's not like it's happening all the time, <laughs> right? So if, if you don't experience that, don't worry. Um, it's extremely challenging to do so, especially the first time, and you don't need to be doing it all the time. Um, in fact, if you were to experience that all the time, it would really destabilize your human experience. Um, although, to be clear, this is also something you grow into and more 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 you will experience your own abstraction but it will unfold over time in a way that is aligned for you so what was my point the consciousness of your own abstraction the consciousness of your own abstraction you can glimpse it through your own just vague impressions vague sensations right when you're lost in thought, when you're in the daydream, when you're falling asleep, when you are asleep, when you're deep in meditation, those vague impressions, those vague sensations, feelings and thoughts that seem completely disconnected from your own human experience. You can just get that impression, get that impression. And the more you connect with that, the more that heals you from your feelings of being an outsider on earth. And you start to love the fact that you are an outsider. And the more you love the fact that you are an outsider, the more you can let your own character shine, right? The more you can let your own character or your own essence, the more you can let your own essence shine. And then you become a hub and you become a hub of creation. You become a hub of creation where other, where other beautiful, benevolent, co-creative energies flow to you and want to interconnect with you and then you become part of this like 
like a network, right? You start to you start to network with others who are like you, right? With your soul family. You know, just a whole network. So there you are, letting your essence shine, and here's somebody else's who they're letting their essence shine, and here's someone else and someone else and someone else, right? And everyone gets all hooked up. <laughs> And if you think, okay, so in this drawing, this person is the hub, right? Well, but you know what? On another level, this person is the hub because there's someone over here. And I drew this really poorly, but you know what I mean. You get my drift, right? <laughs> right? If you just imagine this going out and out and out, everyone is the hub. So just because someone is a hub, that doesn't mean that someone else isn't also a hub, right? <laughs> Think of the flower of life. I could have had that piece of fabric out to show that. So it's just this, this part of linking up, this networking, this networking with others who are on your same level of consciousness, creating that web. And that is very, very Aquarius, right? Aquarius is the network of consciousness. Aquarius is the network of consciousness. And interesting, right? Here we have this fixed energy the fixed signs, these are all the fixed signs, the fixed energy creating this, this web, this network. Finally, laziness and guidance. So this card, this laziness card, this would be the nine of cups, by the way. <laughs> this laziness card. There are many ways you could interpret this. I will let you just look at this for a second so you can get your own vibe on this and how it might apply for you personally. This person, he's on vacation, right? He is, he's chilling. He's got his sun, his sun umbrella, sun umbrella. What is the, what's the word for that? For a big umbrella you put out in the sun? I, I'm having like a total brain fart here. <laughs> he's got like his drinks, right? He's got his slippers on. And here there's all of this, like, it's like the world is shattering behind him and he don't give a shit, right? He don't give a shit. He's just like, nah, I'm chilling. I'm chilling here. I'm enjoying my vacation. And you, so I could easily see how someone could interpret this to be bad. Like what, what's wrong with this guy? He's like, he, why isn't he paying attention, right? He doesn't see that the whole world is crumbling right behind him. But you know, I see this, um, cause I'm actually going to be camping. I'm going to be on vacation during this full moon. I'm leaving to go camping on the 11th. And you know what? Um, I didn't even realize when I booked the camping trip that it was the part of the full moon, that it was the time of the full moon. I booked the camping trip specifically so that we could watch the Perseid, the Perseids media shower. If that's happening on like the 11th, 12th and 13th, I mean, that's when it peaks, right? So we're hoping, we were hoping to see some shooting stars and then it, then it turned out, oh, Hey, I actually booked this trip. Um, to be during the Aquarius full moon. And I was like, well, I guess that's perfect, right? So this is gonna be me. I'm gonna be rocking this energy during this Aquarius full moon. I'm gonna be out there sitting next to the lake, you know, looking up at the meteor shower, looking up at the full moon, doing this. Probably gonna have a beer in one hand and I'm gonna be relaxing in my brand new um, zero gravity lawn chair, right? <laughs> that's what I'm gonna be doing. And it's like, whatever is happening out there, like whatever is falling apart, I'm not gonna be caring about it right then. Like whatever needs to be worried about, I'm gonna worry about it when after, after I get home from my little camping trip, right? I, it's <laughs> so I'm gonna really lean into this. I'm gonna lean into, I'm gonna be this guy. I'm gonna be this guy in the time of the full moon. And, and I really see this as a benevolent energy because it came out with this card guidance guidance, right? Look at this. This is like literally an angel. This is literally a guiding angel. We have these rainbows. And so I actually take this to mean when you're in this state of just surrendering to the bliss of the moment, even if that means being lazy, right? Because laziness is just a judgment. It's like, are you, are you being lazy or are you surrendering to divine bliss? Right? You could, both are true, but which way do you want to interpret that for yourself, right? I'm going to call it surrendering to divine bliss. And that's when you're going to receive guidance. That's where you're going to receive interdimensional communication. That's where you're going to receive inspiration, right? That's when you're going to receive healing and, and upgrades and like all of that cool stuff, right? That's when it comes through when you're in that moment of surrendering to the beauty of the moment. And suddenly it's like, that's it. <laughs> suddenly that's it. Suddenly I have nothing else to say. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm just going to leave it at that, but I'm going to get one more card. 
This here is actually my proto, this is my personal Oracle deck that I just made. I just got it back from the printer. Um, this is the prototype. I need to make a few more changes and get a new test copy back. And then I'm gonna be having this in my shop. So I'm gonna draw a card. These all just have uh, different messages that I've channeled over the years. I just literally took um, I went through my journals and pulled out little like sentences of little messages that I thought were supposed to go in the deck and I just put them on these cards. <laughs> so let's see. And this is interesting. This is, I think this is the first time I've mentioned that on this channel. And th so this leads me into one final message for this Aquarius full moon, right? Um, Aquarius energy is also related to the eyes of others, the eyes of others, how other people see you. And with Aquarius energy, there can be like a lack of privacy, right? A lack of privacy because everything is clear, everything is exposed. Um, and that like, if you think back to the videos I posted during Aquarius season, right? During Aquarius season six months ago, um, we were really dealing with fears of unity, right? Fears of unity, fears of having our privacy being infringed on, right? So with Aquarius, it can be this feeling of being um, exposed to others. And so there's this message of ha have the courage to like share whatever it is that you have to share, to be your true self in front of others, right? To be your true self in front of others to share something that you've been hiding, to allow something to come to light. That doesn't mean you need to divulge all, all of your secrets, right? You're still, it's, you're still allowed to keep secrets, <laughs> that's fine. Um, but you might find that certain things that you've been keeping hidden no longer need to be hidden. And if you can face the fear of being exposed, you can find that you can actually find, um, you can actually just be comfortable with it, right? You can be comfortable with it. So yeah, that's funny because this is something I've been working, I've had in the works for a couple of months and here it is being, um, put out there into the world for the first time, even though it's not quite finished on the, in the energy of the Aquarius full moon. So let's see what this message is. Everything exists as a thought idea before it can exist as a visual. Everything exists as a visual before it can materialize in the physical. <laughs> this is perfect because <laughs> That's the multi-dimensional coming together, right? The multi-dimensional coming together where on the higher levels, like your abstraction has a thought, right? And then on a lower level, that thing is dreamed into existence. It is visualized, right? In the abstract level, it is conceived as a thought on a oversoul level or a higher self level maybe it is conceived as a visual right it's a, it's conceived as a visual and then on the human level it's conceived literally as a physical thing right the process of materialization the process of manifestation coming all the way down it, it's the process of manifestation is a multi-dimensional experience because everything needs to funnel down from the realm of pure consciousness right it exists in pure consciousness first and then it is finally birthed into the physical birthed into the physical so and that's so funny because this is again, um, these cards for me are an exact example of that because this has been, these are things that I had as thoughts. First, they existed as thoughts. These were messages that I channeled and they existed in my mind. And then I wrote them down in my journal and then they existed as an idea, as like a written image on a page, right? With words and then Man, it's hard to see on the camera, but there is like art back there. I think I need to make the art a little more vivid on this card. Anyway. <laughs> then it existed as files on my computer, right? I made art to go with the messages and they existed as images on my computer. Then I sent those images off to the printer and then now, now it exists as a physical thing, right? The process of creating this deck reflects the process of materializing anything, materializing anything. So. Big potential this week for something to literally materialize into the physical, something that has been winding its way down through the layers of consciousness to finally be produced into the physical. Everything exists as a thought idea before it can exist as a visual. Everything exists as a visual before it can materialize in the physical. The process of creation. 
So I'm going to leave you guys there. Happy full moon. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.